2006 SLR McLaren that we all remember from the height of fame of Paris Hilton, Britney Spears, and of course, Lindsay Lohan. It's by no means a good car. <laughs> However... <laughs> What's up, people? So I am not in the shop. I am down with Ed Bolian, recording some new Vin Ricky, so really excited with that. But let's have a little bit of fun. Ed got the infamous 2006 SLR McLaren that we all remember from the height of fame of Paris Hilton, Britney Spears, and of course, Lindsay Lohan. And you all remember what came about with that. So today, what I want to do is I want to go for a ride, hang out with Ed, drive it. You guys hear it? Let's, let's hear this supercharged V8. The car is amazing. I mean, carbon fiber body, carbon fiber tub. Of course, it's got these just beautifully engineered and articulating proper McLaren doors. And obviously, going back to the time period when Mercedes and McLaren were partnered up on Formula One. So I think this is going to be a blast. And um, yeah, honestly, it is sort of funny being a guy and thinking this was that, that Paris's car with all that. So let's go for a drive. What's up, people? So first exciting and fun thing. I'm not in the passenger seat. There you go. Thank you, sir. So you turn the ignition on and then you use this fancy fighter pilot starter button. Nice, okay, so it's a button. Yes. I got this. Right up your alley. All right. Yeah. I kind of like that. <laughs> it's uh, it's sophisticated, but it's got a little grit. And that's it. it you know, it kind of falls in this window of McLaren trying to be a manufacturer. Yeah. You know, a decade after the uh, F1 project. Is this the climate control? Nope. That is how you modulate between manual shifting modes if you wish. Oh, fascinating. But that's a, the climate control. That is. Okay. This is, that. it's so sophisticatedly minimalist, I have no idea what's going on. There you go. And this is oddly the closest I will probably get to Paris Hilton. That's probably for the best for both of you. <laughs> probably is. Okay, so that so we're gonna have some real car fun and actually talk about this for what it is because the infamous Paris Hilton, Britney Spears, and Lindsay Lohan yep. shoot, that was this car. This mm -hmm. was Paris's car, which is fun and funny and infamous. Yeah, I mean, it was just such an iconic thing to have happened at that point, but uh, but it is very significant for what it is as a car. So let's go sure, drive it and we'll see what you think. The, the brake pedal's unusual, it hinges from the floor. It, it does, and that is one of the major complaints about the car, but we'll see how you feel yeah. about it. It's got a heck of a nose, doesn't it? That it does. All right. Well, the this thing, way, this, this way. way's better? Yeah, Look out. Part. All right, you guys, so driving the SL McLaren, just hopping in it and being in traffic is, in some ways, it's sort of in intuitive because it's a wonderful car when you get out there. But this thing has got some of the most, probably the most bizarre proportions of any production-based street car I've ever been in. The, when we were driving out with some of, you know, coming over some tight areas and whatnot, the, the nose on this is so long, it reminded me of, and I know it sounds silly of being in the Batmobile replica I had. Just how long it is. It's what I immediately thought is this must be what driving a Batmobile would feel like. Yeah. Because you have this eternal hood that you'd never know where the corners are. And I still struggle to park it where I want to because yeah. I don't know where I'm at. We're sitting on top of the rear axle in these tiny little carbon yeah, fiber seats. Back. And it's the interior is surprisingly racy. I mean, this seat fits me perfectly and I'm I'm a thin person. Yeah, and that that's it. I mean, I guess it was ordered for Paris Hilton. She probably weighs 100 pounds soaking wet, but <laughs> yeah. the... Uh, I got Paris Hilton size hips, apparently. That's it, that's what they say about you. Okay. Person. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, it's a it's a weird car, it's a cool car, and it's not like anything else. So you think about sure. it, like, it was kind of a competitor to a Courage GT and an Enzo, but more but so not. it was a competitor to a 599 and an LP640, yeah. which, are, which are also big hypercar touring, yeah. Grand GT supercar things. Like, and, you know, because a, a 599 has an Enzo V12 and the 640, they all have similar power. This has 617. Uh, 631 oh, yeah. on the Mercy, 612 on the 599. The other thing that's very interesting about this is because it's got a supercharged V8 with the exhaust up there, it has a certain gritty rumble right here. 
Yeah, Spitfire which is, style. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah kind of like a Spitfire, sort of like an old uh, fighter plane with the engine up front, which makes the experience not what you would normally expect from you know supercars with V12s. Correct. Yeah, it, it doesn't howl; it roars. Yeah, and it's it's a very very unique experience. And so, oh, yeah. I, I, you know, it, it's by no means a good car. <laughs> <laughs> However, it's really cool to be in. It's really cool. And, it's like it's like what you appreciate about a vintage car. It is. It is. It is. But it works. Yeah. yeah you don't you have to worry actually, about it not starting. We're in traffic. I'm not really worried about it. Exactly. You know? It's idling. Now the proportions are unusual, being it's, we're, we're sitting. It's very racing that way, so you got to be confident what you're doing. But the other thing that's so unusual, I notice. First of all, I love the seats. I love the positioning. Um, you know, so called ergonomics with regard to the throttle pedal it has a nice light touch. The brake pedal is the strangest actuating brake pedal I have felt in a modern production based car. Yeah. It, Spiker's also weird like that. Are they weird they're, like that? They're also bottom hinged. But, it hinges uh, from the bottom with kind of like a small moan on arm and it's it's roundy. So as you put it, 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 it sort of rolls and it's delicate. So it's just something you, you have to get used to. We're hitting the highway. Yeah, we're going to right up over here. And it's it also has so much torque at idle. Oh, that you sure. have to keep pressure, a, a real amount of pressure on the brake to mm -hmm. stop it rolling forward. Uh, it's it's strange. But I drove That's one, uh, there was a guy on Gold Rush last year okay. that came in one, same color as this, but with the red interior. And oh. I, he had a female co-pilot that hated it. Really? And she always wanted to get out, and we were in a GT3 Touring for Is the first it, part of she it. She hated it because of what she was wearing, trying to get in and out? That or? might have been it. Okay. She didn't feel as comfortable in her undergarments at the moment. So regardless, she like kept it. trying to swap in other things. And I'm like, well, let's move. Yes. Yeah. Damn, dude. Exactly. It's fast. And for a car that's relatively heavy, that does all kinds of cool stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. And so... I kept getting in that car, and the driver, the owner, didn't really care that much about driving it. So okay. I drove it probably a thousand miles really? and really kind of came to understand the weirdness of it yeah. and the charm in that regard. How far are we going? Uh, we'll go a couple exits. Oh, wow. I like the supercharger in the muscle. Absolutely. Bumble. Yes. Well, the other thing that's kind of interesting about it is when I got on it, I didn't. It's in the settings that it is right now, it's sprung relatively soft shall we say yes like there's a certain amount of compliance where it, it does grip yeah. it grips well it does the power well but it has the compliance where kind of you'd expect from a grand tour but it also has the athleticism of grip you'd expect from a proper exotic car right so it, it doesn't have a manual transmission throttle response and so it's not gonna just lurch and jump around and slide and all that. Sure, but that's not really what this it was doesn't feel to like do. it should, looking the way this car looks with gigantic vents and all the things. But it does, I mean, it does jump. I mean, yeah. Oh yeah. You know. And the power and the torque curve coming together is very linear, very smooth, sure. and obviously ample. So, you know. It, Super tractable. I mean, I, I, can, I can drive it fingertip. Yep. Um, and you feel Baller is all get out. Basically, a hypercar Batmobile. Incredible. And has air conditioning that works, kind yeah. of. Yeah. It works, kind of. Yeah. It, it gets the job done. I and that's one of the more interesting things. Do you want to hop off in a half mile? We can go back to the house. But is that it, this was. I don't have your mirrors adjusted, right? No, oh, it's fine. They're Sorry. tiny little mirrors. Yeah. They really do that. Um, the, this was really like McLaren dipping their toe in manufacturer status. So Got it. Mercedes was, was providing the electronics, the block, you know, everything else. And they just kind of tweaked it and they built the chassis. Got it. And so they said that the F1s took like 400 hours to build the tub. Okay. And these took 40 and the new cars take four. Oh, wow. And so they're getting better at it. I see. And, you know, I'm trying to think, well, when, how much sooner did this come out than the MP4? When was the MP4? 12. 12, to okay, so this was as between year. the F1 and the MP4. Correct. Interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Which is funny because in a manner of speaking, this car almost gets overlooked or forgotten in the McLaren lineage, strangely. Totally, yeah. Why, and do, you, why do you think? Well, they didn't sell that many. I mean, they sold 2,000 of them all, for all four model years, well, plus the 722S. Yeah. And so... 
the the cars are they're weird sure. and they were never you know it's not that much better from a performance perspective than an SL55 which was a barnstorming amazing right. car when when it was new still is it's a 500 sure. horsepower car and so in that regard like it's just one of those things that you know people didn't know how to own and use the thing mm -hmm. and so there's plenty of people that daily drive them because they do that i think i would yeah, yeah. but yeah. you can also blast across the continent oh yeah i feel like i said this to you i feel like that this car would have been perfect for a wealthy german that liked to blast across germany totally that seemed like kind of in my mind what works well exactly and and that was there were a lot of people that daily drove f1s for a long time yeah and you know they have some pretty crazy maintenance opportunities but so does this we'll just see what manifests oh but, does it what, what are the big maintenance items on this well it's not so much stuff you have to do it's just like the recommended <laughs> stuff okay. like every time you have the under trays off they want you to replace every bolt oh really wait stuff what do you that, mean every bolt like that hold the under trays oh. onto the chair like okay. i guess they're saying that you know it's easy to cross thread them or anything like that okay. but, and so like the b and c services are supposed to be just catastrophically bad fascinating like but i mean it has timing chains it's, oh it's yeah got, yeah uh, there's valves it's there's no got... anticipated time bomb consumer and it's it's an it's a proper automatic gearbox it is yeah. i mean it's a good one it does things well and it's well suited to the car but you don't have clutches wearing out well it's got long ratios and it shifts pretty hard mm -hmm. which i like like i mean as you think about owning aging supercars, yeah. the liabilities of transmission issues, especially in non-stick shift cars. That's one of the biggest turnoffs to many aging supercars. Absolutely. Today. Yeah. I mean, it's scary about an Enzo. Sure. It's scary about a 360. Well, in, and we had this conversation, and people all know on my channel, I, I dog on pedal shifters a lot. Sure. Now, the reason for that, why are we not shifting? What did I do? Oh, you just, I put it in no manual mode. Yeah. Okay. I haven't learned how to shift it properly. I just know third pedal. But no, I dogged on paddle shifters uh, like crazy. And the reason being was I was working as a part-time Ferrari mechanic back in the days where we were servicing 355s. And 355s were really the first F1 gearbox that was readily available and sold a lot of. And I hated them. Yeah. Because, you know, if you were good at driving stick, you, you were better than the computer was in the oh, actuation. Oh, totally. Absolutely. And those didn't have uh, throttle by wire. Oh, yeah. Okay. And so they actually would retard the spark in order to let you shift. Yeah. That's yeah, so it's a pretty rudimentary system. In fact, when we were doing the car trek Ferraris for the price of a Camry, mm -hmm. I wanted to get a 355 F1 Spider <laughs> because to kind of illustrate the fact that if you really oh, buy a, top the coolest Ferrari that you could for the price of a mm -hmm. Camry, which would be a 355, yeah, that but you can't really you can't buy a stick one in for 40 grand anymore. And so I I was like that would be perfect just to show everybody like how this thing breaks because it would break all the way. <laughs> and so but I ended up the one I found it was it was not a 40 grand car it was a 20 grand car it was a piece of junk wow and they uh, but he he insisted that it was a 35 grand car and a guy bought it and stick swamped it and turboed it really locally yeah huh so we're gonna make a left and two yeah. lights well yeah and I, I docked on him but like we were going back to aging supercars um, you know as paddle shifted gearboxes that were actually a clutch and operated by the computer and shifted it all and left here mm -hmm. um, evolved they got better they did absolutely but as things age maybe such as this this might be the kind of supercar or hypercar that you would want to age with theoretically totally yeah because it'll I think it'll stand the test of time better so in 20 years it hopefully it's not going to be a cantankerous disaster like some of these other cars could be oh totally I mean you think about these hybrid electric hypercars yes. like a La oh Ferrari or 918 I mean forget it what's that car going to do in 20 years oh, just go no. right there if you can going to be an expensive paperweight I don't know yeah I mean there are some of them Straight. Uh, right here right here that if you um, there are some of them that you think alright I could just remove the electric part and, and just get it to drive exactly yeah. there's one pothole in the Got it. Thank you. And the so like on a LaFerrari, mm -hmm. the uh, FXXK doesn't have the battery, so they okay. know how to make the car work oh, I see. without the battery. Now, 
whether or not they are allowed to take it out, who knows. But right. that's where you get into like Lanzante converting F1 GTRs into road cars sure. or something like that. Well, and as an example, and there's a Maserati Gran Turismo Spider here. Um, when we got that car for my wife, part of the reason is because it's a pretty exotic car, but because it has a proper automatic gearbox, it's something that should be able to last longer in, in without having those cantankerous aspects. Totally. Yeah, and it does have essentially like first gen ceramic brakes. Oh yeah. Uh, which would be catastrophically expensive Ugh. to replace. However, um, you know, these are like 996 PCCBs. Okay. Um, Challenge Stradale brakes mm -hmm. and you know they, they can get real squealy and stuff like that. But I there's a interesting kind of alien shatter subtle spaceship noise right before you stop. Yeah. And it's that's kind because of an interesting character. It's not annoying. Yeah, you have to you have to really break hard in mm -hmm. order for them to behave the way you'd anticipate them. Got it. Again, it's not that it's not a confidence inspiring car. It feels like it can go, but you got a green. Nice. And, but it's it's a thing where you you don't always feel the need to drive it as hard as you possibly could. Right. Like we're right now we're just bopping around in traffic, having a conversation, driving through a small town. Yeah. And it's great. And it does that, which a lot of cars in its you know genre would not. Correct. But yeah, you know, I, I like know. it. A what lot. do you think? Well, honestly, with the price point of where it is, I feel like this is something I would put on my list. Yeah. Honestly. Well, cool. Well, I appreciate it so much you letting us go for a ride, have a little fun. It's always be fun to be down telling Ben Wiki stories, but more fun when we can spend some time together and just do car guy stuff. That's it. So I appreciate it. Guys, I hope you subscribe. Uh, also, Ed, you got a new car trek series going on. We do, yes. So we did Ferraris for the price of a Camry. It is out now on Tavarish's channel. So check it out and uh, definitely subscribe awesome. to this guy. <laughs> See you guys later. A huge shout out to KW Suspension. Guys, this year you're gonna see beautiful coilovers such as this going on many of my cars, including my Porsche 944, my Dodge Viper, and even some of these crazy race cars. And the reason is simple. This is one of the best shock companies in the world. It was founded in Germany in 1992 by Klaus Wolfarth, and recently they just launched a new 1.2 million square foot robotic warehouse where they're creating unbelievably nice suspension components such as this for 15 different original equipment manufacturers. So whether you're a street enthusiast, a weekend track warrior, or you are building the Le Mans car your dreams, guys, check out KW Suspension. Unbelievably nice shock. So go down in the description below, patronize them. You're gonna be glad you did. Racing is the most affordable form of motorsports there is, and it's also the most competitive. So for that reason, you've got to have an amazing chassis. And for me, it's Top Cart. When I'm at a race, I simply go to topcartusa.com, check out their chassis setup and tuning guide, and that's the secret that gets me on the podium. So when it's time for you to go racing, call up Top Cart USA.